The Yachts for Sale and Charter YouTube channel is of course designed to show you yachts that are for sale and for charter. So I'm always especially happy to show you a yacht built by a company that I've never covered before on this channel. In this case, San Lorenzo. <laughs> San Lorenzo is one of Italy's and in fact the world's biggest production yacht builders and the yacht I will show you today called Sasper is an example of their highly successful SD92 range. Before I take you through a tour of her interiors though let me tell you something about her basic technical details. Sasper was built in 2010 and is 27.6 meters long with a beam of 7.15 meters. If you are in the market for a yacht of this size, you may want to compare that beam with other yachts of the same length. I suspect that it compares very favorably. She has a draft of 1.8 meters. That's just under six feet for those that prefer feet and inches. And she has two MAN 1200 horsepower engines that will propel her to a top speed of 18 knots. Her hull is what's called a semi-displacement hull. So you won't get the same speed that you will from a planing hull, but you will get a higher speed than you would if she were a pure displacement hull. Also, the hull form will give you a little more interior volume than you would find in a pure planing hull. The range stated by the manufacturer is 2,200 nautical miles, but range is such a variable on any yacht that I took a moment to discuss it with the captain who informed me that the 2,200 nautical mile range is achievable at about 8.5 knots when the engines are consuming about 19 litres of fuel an hour each. I can't stress enough that a good range on a yacht like this is absolutely not about being able to cross an ocean. The yacht is built to enjoy bays and coves, Monaco and Mallorca, Croatia and the Bahamas. And a good range means you can pass most of the season without having to stop and refuel very often if at all. So those are some of the basic technical characteristics of the yacht. But for many production yacht buyers, the first and the most important criteria is whether they even like the look of the yacht in the first place on the outside and on the inside, whether these spaces are divided in a way that will work well for them and their friends and their family. So let's take a look at the interiors and find out The main lounge is very fresh and light. I'm sure that interior designers will correct me on this, but I would describe this as a beach club style. It's simple, sophisticated and functional. I'm not sure how many yacht owners and their guests actually use an interior dining table as a dining table, but I can't count how many times I've met owners on yachts like this to find them sitting at the table with their laptop open or just chatting with friends on board with a cup of coffee. That said, it can of course be used for wonderful formal dining occasions. This is a very classic layout of a yacht with a door to port leading off to the galley and crew quarters and a door to starboard leading to the on-deck master's stateroom. Let's take a look first at the owner's quarters and you'll notice that San Lorenzo have made this lobby area leading to the stateroom as a real feature on board with these magnificent sliding doors for access to the lobby. In some parts of the world and in certain circumstances, guests are more likely to enter from the side doors than from the aft deck. So this is a wonderful characteristic of the yacht and we'll see in a moment that it's on both sides. Moving past the lobby and into the owner's area, we find a short corridor with a wardrobe to the left, then the ensuite bathroom, and finally the stateroom itself, which has been positioned for the owner to enjoy optimum views of the surroundings. I have to say that to find a main deck owner's stateroom on a 92 foot yacht really is quite extraordinary. San Lorenzo have made a great job of fitting this in whilst maintaining a very sleek profile for the yacht. 
Before we take a look at the guest staterooms though, let me show you the galley. You'll remember that the door to the port side of the main lounge leads here. And as you can see, once again, there are those ornate side doors, this time for the cruise use. And then a very well-equipped galley. For those of you who are trying to figure out whether the galley backs onto the owner's stateroom and want to know if the noise may disturb the owner, let me tell you that the owner's bathroom that we looked at earlier divides the galley and the sleeping area, so it acts as a sound buffer. And for those of you who write to me regularly asking to see the crew quarters, I asked the captain for permission to film that too. After all, remember that often crew live in these areas, so I'm asking to film their habitat. I'm happy to say that the friendly Italian Captain Mario granted us permission, and we were able to see a tribute to San Lorenzo's ability to fit so much into a 92-foot yacht with a small crew mess, three crew cabins, with two bathrooms, and even space for a washer and dryer. What about the guest accommodation though? Well, let's go back up and around to the starboard side lobby again, where a stairwell leads below deck. Here, to port, we have a double cabin with an ensuite bathroom. To starboard, we have a twin cabin, again with an ensuite bathroom. But the surprise comes after those cabins, where there is a glorious full beam VIP stateroom again, complete with a very beautiful ensuite. Let's go back to the crew lobby though, because there's a feature on this yacht that's really interesting if you're thinking of buying this yacht or a similar length yacht, or even just to increase your yachting knowledge and your yachting vocabulary. You see, most yachts of this length will have the main deck, which is where we are now, and they put the helm station on the main deck. All of the cabins go below deck, and then often there's a second helm station above, which is called a flybridge. The problem happens when you want to put a master stateroom on a 90, 92 foot yacht. Where do you put the helm station? Well, one solution would be to build an entirely new deck. That would make this a tri-deck yacht with what would be called a bridged deck. But honestly, on a, a yacht of this length, that can look quite ungainly. And that's not really what the Italian builders are all about. So San Lorenzo opted for a different solution, which in Italian they call due ponti e mezzo. That means two and a half decks. In English, we call that a raised pilot house. Let me show you how it works. A few steps lead from the lobby to the helm station, a relatively compact area but very functional even with seating for guests to enjoy watching the captain at work or for crew members to accompany him. This is positioned at a mezzanine level, benefiting from the guest and service stairwells and a void underneath that it's used for technical equipment. Then a few more steps up and we gain access to this wonderful sun deck, shaded by a hard top and supremely well equipped. It looks to me like the owner of Saspa is a man after my own heart, this deck has ample space for sunbathing, yes, but pride of place goes to a dining area that's serviced by a well-equipped bar with fridge space and also a barbecue hot plate. And if you think that this is a mistake in the teak deck, then you would be mistaken. Take a look up and you'll see this built-in shower head, just perfect for cooling down after lazing in the sun on a hot summer's afternoon. As with all Italian yachts, design is every bit as important as functionality. And I have to say, I really do like this feature on the aft deck, a spacious dining and seating area facing clean mirrored glass that are actually hiding on one side steps up to the sun deck and on the other steps down to the technical areas. And because I know that you like to see the technical areas, I'm happy to show you them. At the bottom of these steps is a door to access the engine room, 
where you can see these two 1200 horsepower MAN engines, two 33 kilowatts Kohler generators, and inspect the easily accessibility to the pumps, filters, and other essential equipment. The yacht also has a transom garage that can comfortably accommodate a Williams 325 jet tender and a jet ski. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that the SD92 has been a hugely popular model for San Lorenzo and it's easy to see why. Not only is she a very attractive looking yacht, but also they've packed so much in to just 92 feet of space. And you know, when you buy a pre-owned model that's been well looked after, like this one has, it is such a saving over the cost of a new model of a comparable size. For under three million euro, you get an on-deck master, a full beam VIP, a huge sun deck. You get sleek, sexy modern lines, you get pedigree. I can't help thinking that actually you could probably put this on the charter market and come very close to covering your yearly running costs too. But I should probably step back at this point because it's not me that represents the owner to sell this yacht. It's my colleague, Joost Govertz, who is one of the most experienced brokers that I've ever met. He's concluded a host of yacht sales. And if you have a serious interest in purchasing this yacht, he's the person to reach out to. His email address is on screen now, and with him, you're in very good hands.